and gentlemen, JD here, Timber and Anvil. Welcome back to the workshop. So here is the monumental success of my crucible steel. So you can see on close inspection the dendrites here, which are shown as these vertical crystals. And you get that with really high carbon uh, Wootz steel. So here's another good area. Uh, but you get the idea. So, as you can see, I didn't get full melt, not 100% liquef liquefaction. Um, basically up to about this level I was pretty well fully liquefied, but above that you can still see regular square shapes which are indicative of the material that I started with, which did not fully liquefy. Uh, so basically it means we didn't get enough heat at higher zones in the crucible, but we do have a completely solid billet for the most part. We have some massive inclusions. Uh, there was a leak in the crucible, um, pretty minor one. I didn't really lose much material, but I did see some uh, ooze from the bottom and I saw sparklers, which are, you know, you see the sparklers when you overheat steel and accidentally melt it. They're pretty unique. Uh, so that was not, I would not have attributed that to um, the charcoal or anything like that. It was definitely steel that was burning. Um, but otherwise, this is still pretty substantial success. There's room for improvement. Um, I know what I'm going to do next, and that is uh, I have a piece of 12-inch diameter stainless steel exhaust pipe from work that uh, I'm going to use as a, a vertical shield, essentially line the inside of it with KO wool and uh, use that as a, you know, a better insulation, a better means of insulation than what I did on this. Uh, anyhow, another part of the video I wanted to show you guys is I'm relining my forge. So I did this back in February, um, but I didn't do it very well. Instead of using KO wool because I didn't have any at the time, um, I filled in, this is a brake drum, so the walls are straight. I filled in that, you know, 90 degree area there. I want, I want the walls to slope toward the, the bottom of the, you know, the twir, basically. And the reason why is because if it's a straight wall, then you don't have charcoal or, or coal naturally falling into place. Whereas if the walls are sloped, then it will naturally, you know, sort of self-feed. You won't have a, a hollow spot, essentially. So... When I did this back in February, I filled that void space with broken chunks of fire brick, um, even smaller fragments, and I had four, you know, square pieces kind of as the primary four corners, and then packed in around them as best I could with sand and fire brick, and then uh, used satanite to to blend it all. I think this is a much smarter solution. I got some kale wool recently, um, so I kind of. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, I kind of stuffed some kale wool into that corner space there and then cut a couple of long strips and uh, sort of packed it in. So now I got Satan right here and I'm about to literally just brush it on. I need to get it a little stickier than this. You kind of make this, the consistency of Satanite. Um, however you need and in this particular application I want it to be pretty loose so that it spreads easily with this brush this right here is a little bit too thick um, but anyhow I'm gonna go ahead and call it here thank you very much for watching um, I really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe that's just a you know just a drop in the bucket of what we got to come um, I hope to get much much better at crucible steel making and uh, to be able to actually start experimenting with um, basically different amounts of carbon in there, different alloying elements like phosphorus, etc. There's so much you can do. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun. So stay tuned. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Again, please hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.